y'all ready to get started tonight? Amen. It's good to see all of y'all here, all those that are watching online. Amen. Thank y'all for being with us tonight, and uh, we're going to get started in the Word of God. So, uh, let's pray. I agree 100%. <laughs> I, I agree 100%. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all those that are here tonight, Father, and all those that are watching online. Father, I pray that you bless this Bible study tonight, Father. I pray you give us revelation and understanding tonight. Help us to see what your word says, and I pray that we would have eyes not only to see but ears to hear, Lord, and to be able to receive the word of God. We thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said amen, 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 amen. All right. So, uh, if, so what I want to do tonight is I want to continue where I left off last week. Is all right? So we're going to continue where we left off last week because I really feel like it's an important topic and something that we need to be uh, discussing. Amen. So John chapter three. If you have your Bibles, John chapter three. It says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same, this man came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Verse 3, Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So we've got to be what? Born again. That's the key. Born from above. Amen. There you go, Jonathan. You're getting ahead of me. You're right on there. Let me tell you all something about, Pastor, about Brother Jonathan. G- God healed Brother Jonathan. Sunday mor- Sunday, Saturday, we went to go eat with Brother Edward and Jonathan Los Cucos. So we, we called him. We hadn't been able to hang out in a while. and We just did our usual hangout. We ate. And he sounded awful. He sounded hoarse. Very bad. And Jamie, Jamie Sunday began to pray for him. And and I just looked over at him and, you know, just prayed for him or whatever. And he began to clear his throat. And immediately as he began to clear his throat, he, his voice started changing. By the, by the next day, Monday, he called uh, Jamie and said his throat was completely gone. Amen, somebody. So that's what I'm telling you. God's a healer. Amen. Now, I just, now I, I just want to say this to you guys. And just hear what I'm going to tell you. We didn't anoint him with oil, right? We didn't cry. We didn't weep. We didn't have, you know, way make or miracle. You know, there wasn't a move of the spirit, right? It, it, we just spoke it. And, and I, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, it is, it's not about cre- – atmospheres are great. I'm not against that. But it's, it's more about what you speak and your faith. Amen? You know, when Jesus healed the sick – I, I want you to think about this for a minute. Now I'm getting off on a different topic, Grandma. But when Jesus healed the sick, and Jesus raised it. I want you all to think about this. Jesus was healing the sick, raising the dead on the streets. Where there was crying babies. Where there was people yelling. People talking loud. People wanting to see Jesus. Right? Nobody, there was no music. He didn't have no, he didn't have what we do here. You know, a lot of our churches, I'm just going to say, it's become a ritual. And I'm looking for a word, Jamie, like, uh, theatrical is that a word the word I'm looking for it, it's like we come to church and we want to be entertained what songs are we going to sing today <laughs> is, it, is it going to be is it going to be loud you know is it going to be rocking you know but Jesus didn't have all that Jesus just woke up every morning and he went about doing good healing the sick raising the dead and so sometimes I want you to understand that it's not about your your uh, how much music you have on or how much Bible you've read this week it's all about where's your faith. Jesus said, be it unto you according to your faith. And I'm telling you something. I'm going to tell you this. One of the most powerful prayers you can pray is the smallest prayer. Right? Just lay your hand and say, be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. And God will do the miracle. Amen. Like, oh, now when we pray for Sister Annie, yes, we were praying. The Holy Spirit was moving. God healed her. God touched her. There's nothing wrong with that. But what I'm saying is that don't think that it has to be that way. God can do it in any atmosphere. It's just if we simply believe it. And you could be at H-E-B buying your, your Butterball turkey, right? <laughs> That's the turkey brand. Butterball turkey for Thanksgiving. And somebody can just walk by you, Diane, and say, hey, Diane, 
pray for me. I'm going to do. You can just grab their hand on the cart and just say, be healed in Jesus. And just hey, you have a good day and keep walking. And next thing you know, that person's healed, touched by the power of God. Amen. So I want you all to th- just always remember that. Amen. So he said, don't he said, be born again. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Verse four. Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless a man is born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, stop. I'm not going to preach on it today because this will be another teaching by itself. But a lot of people believe, Diane, that when Jesus said to be born of water and the spirit, that the water represents baptism. Okay, That's what I was taught. That's what I believe. I don't believe that anymore. Okay, There's different views on what the water is. But that's not the topic for today. Some people believe it's the some people believe it's baptism. Some believe it's it's uh, the word being born of, of the word because the Bible says that the word washes us and cleanses us. Uh, some people actually believe this is probably more. The more I study this, I'm starting to lean more to this. Is that it's actually saying being born of the water hyphen the spirit. That the word and there in the Greek is actually a hyphen. So what it should say. Is most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of the water, which is the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Okay? Because how many of y'all know the water? Jesus said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. And I believe that that's probably more accurate because the next section says what? He cannot enter the kingdom of God. Next screen, Jamie. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So notice, if, if the water represents the spirit, it would continue the flow of the context because he ends up saying you got to be born of the spirit. He should have said you got to be born of baptism and spirit, but he doesn't say that. Amen. I don't believe baptism saves you. I believe baptism is a public declaration of your salvation. That's what I believe. Amen. I believe that when you get baptized, you are not marrying Christ. You are already. Let me say this. You are already in love and in a relationship with Christ before you got baptized. Baptism is just the ceremony that tells the world I'm a child of the most high God. Amen. That's what I believe. So, uh, but should we be baptized? Yes. And let me tell you this. If, now, we have this in our church. I believe one day we are. Every, every person, the moment they get saved, should be baptized. Baptized. You know, we always, and we do it here too, which, which is something that, we should practice more is that every time somebody accepted Christ, they got baptized right away. There was no waiting. You know, we usually, and a lot of churches have, we're going to have baptism today, you know, and they'll do it a year later. We're going to have baptism today, and they wait for people to sign up. Well, in, in Jesus' time, they didn't do that. They said, do you believe? Yes. They said, well, here is water. Let's get baptized, and they would get, and they would get baptized, okay? So I, I think a lot of times we think that it has to be a specific day. When If we want to be biblical, the baptismal water should always be ready because you don't know who's going to go under. Amen. Uh, Pastor Larry, it doesn't matter if I get baptized in a river, a tub, or a, a lake. It don't matter where you get baptized. Just don't make sure the water is clean. That's all I say. Amen. You want to get baptized. I, I know I had a friend of mine who got baptized in his bathtub at home. That's all he had. But he went under and he came out. Right? Uh representing that he had been cleansed from from his old life. All right. So last week I talked to y'all about the phrases being born uh, being born, he says be born and be born again. Do y'all see that? And I asked y'all last week I said what does it mean to be a Christian? What does it mean to be saved, right? A lot of people we when you ask somebody what does it mean to be a Christian? A lot of people mean it's like, you know, I go to church now, right? I read the Bible, you know. But that's not the language that Jesus used. Jesus didn't use the, the, the language of being, being a Christian is just I go to church now. Or I don't go where I used to go anymore. But, or some people just think that being born again or being a Christian means that I'm forgiven, right? You know, I, I'm, I'm not, I, all my sins have been washed away. That's part of it, you know, or like I said last week, or it's a get a get out of hell free card. Right. But that's not what being born again. I the board, the being born again is being born from above. Right. When you're born again, you are made a new creation in Christ. I'm going to say that again. 
To be born again is to be made a new creation in Christ. Paul said, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Right? So I'm not the old Larry. I'm a new Larry. The moment I got saved, Christ united his life with me, right? We become, the Bible says we become one spirit with Christ, right? The Bible says that his seed is in us, right? How many of y'all last week we, we learned that that word seed means sperm? It, it literally means, it's the Greek word sperma, where we get our English word sperm. And I told y'all last week it takes a sperm and an egg in order for a woman to give birth. And we have God's sperm in us. We have God's DNA in us. It's his genetics. The word sperm means genetics. It means nature. It means his character. So we have God's character, right? Everybody, my grandma always tells everybody that I have my dad's character because I'm a jokester. You know me, by the time, by the time this conversation is over, we will be laughing, right? I can't help it. If I'm not laughing, then something's wrong. <laughs> If I'm not cutting up, then something's wrong, right? I just love to joke around. That's just who I am. So if I have my dad's genetics, then I'm going to take on his characteristics. Say it again. That's a powerful statement, but don't miss it. If I have my dad's genetics, I'm going to take on his characteristics. Whatever my dad is, I'm going to be. Why? Because I have his sperm. I have his genetics inside of me. Amen, somebody. So when, you, so when people say things like I'm born again, when you say I'm a Christian, what you're saying is that my spirit has been made new, right? Jamie, go uh, right there on this screen. Look at the screen. Everybody that's online watching, I want you to look in your Bibles at John 3, where we read, and look at verse, um, Jamie, go up on screen, back. One, I think it's verse 5. Yes, verse 5. So, excuse me. John 3, verse 5. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of the water and the spirit. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. Next screen, Jamie. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the capital S is lowercase s. Y'all remember we talked about that last week, right? Capital S is God's spirit. That which is born of God's spirit is spirit, is lowercase s which is our spirit. Now stop. Jesus said we have to be born of spirit. So if we, let me say it this way. If we are born again, then that means what? We have God's spirit within our spirit. We are one with Christ. Are y'all with? Guys, let me tell you something. That's why y'all, you know, I, I, I do it here. You know, we look up and we worship the Lord, right? Really, we shouldn't look up. We should look down because Christ lives in us, the hope of glory. Amen. God's not, God's not only in the sky. God is within you. You are his temple, and he dwells within your spirit, right? So our spirits are new the moment we get saved. As a Christian, the, the Bible says that when God made man, I'm, I'm saying a lot, but this is all review, and for those that are watching, I want y'all to pay attention as well because we, we talked about all this last week. But I'm going to pick it up for something new today. When God made Adam and Eve, the Bible tells us that God breathed into man. The, the Hebrew word is ruah. Okay? Ruah is where we get the word for spirit, breath, or wind. So when God created man, man was a mannequin, if I could say it that way, just so y'all understand. Man was standing there, but man could not do anything because man did not have the breath of God in him yet. But when God breathed on man, that we, be, we became alive. Why? Because we are spirit beings. Okay? You are a spirit being. Say, I am a spirit being. Okay, now what? Now, now. Now we're going to pick up today's lesson. Are you ready? Go with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. So part 2. And I'll probably tie in part 1 as well with this as we build along. But I want you to know. Uh, I, I've been talking about all this stuff, about us being spirit, all of those things. And I just want to show you all scripture. Y'all should know it. Some of you are new. 
so I need you to see it, okay? Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 23, Pastor Jamie. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. See? Look what it says. It says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole, what? Say it. Spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. So may our what? Our whole spirit, soul, and body. Pastor Jamie, bring the picture up. Please. Pastor Jamie's does good. Do y'all remember this from last week? Remember the three triangles. I'm so, those that are online, you probably can't see this. I apologize. But there is a spirit. A man is a spirit. Man has a soul. And we live in a body. Okay? What is born again when we're saved? Our spirit. Our sp- now look at the picture. The Holy Spirit has an arrow to our spirit. What, is that, what does that arrow represent? It's that we're connected. Our spirit is connected with God's spirit at the moment of salvation. Are y'all with me? That's what John chapter 3 Verse 3 is talking about when it says that we've got to be born again. The whole chapter of John. Our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. Good job, Annie. Annie remembers. Our mind, our will, and our emotions. And our body is what? The lonja, the legs, everything. We're talking about our physical body, okay? The body is nothing. Every time you see the word body there, it just means your physical body, okay? Now, when we, when, when you go to a funeral, when somebody dies, you go to a funeral, and you see them laying in the casket, right? What is there? Is the spirit there? No. The body is. Okay, now watch this. I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. What, out of all these three, what is the real you? Huh? The spirit. The, the core of who you are is spirit. You, listen, I'm going to say it this way. You are a spirit that possesses a soul and lives in a body. Notice what I said. Notice, I'm going to say it. Very carefully, because notice the notice the words I use. You are a spirit. That is who you are. We possess a soul. We have what? Emotions. We have a will. We have a way that we think. That's our soul. And we live in a body. So all this sexiness that y'all see up here, it's just my physical body. <laughs> That's it. All these good looks, Albert, it's just my physical body. But that's truly not me. All this is is my earth suit. How many of you know you can't go to space without a space suit? And we cannot come to earth without a body. Why is, now, this, now I'm going to help you understand this. How is Jesus God? The, 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 I'm going to answer it. Think about what we just talked about. We said, y'all said y'all are spirit, and you said you live in a body. And I, y'all just said you can't come to earth without a body, right? Y'all just said that, which is all biblical. So the, the, now this is going to explain the question. How is Jesus God? Jesus is God because God is a spirit. And the only way God could come to earth to redeem us is he had to put on a earth suit and become man to bring about our redemption. God manifested in the flesh. Why do you think when the, the Bible says, uh, Diane, it says that when the Jews saw Jesus, 
They told Jesus, you're only 34 years old. How can you be older than Abraham? And what did he say? He said, before Abraham was, I am. Now stop. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Who said that in the Old Testament? God. The Spirit. So what is he saying? When you look at me, you're looking at God. I am God. I'm God in a suit. I'm God as man. That's why he was both God and man. Jesus has a human, God, let me say it this way, God is human and he is, let me, no, not, that's not the right way, I shouldn't even say that like that either. When God came to the, when Jesus came, Jesus was both God and a human because he had emotions and he had feelings, yet he knew all things as God. As a God, as God, he was before all things. But as a man, he was 33 and a half years old. <laughs> so now I'm going to ask you a hard question. Did God die on the cross or did the flesh die on the cross? Y'all are learning. You see, guys, when we really think about all these things, they're so easy to comprehend. See, Jesus, yes, Jesus died on the cross. But God didn't die. Well, Jesus was God, yes. But without the spirit dwelling the flesh, it's just a body. So the body died, but God did not die. For God is a spirit. Y'all are getting it. God is spirit. Now, so our mind, go, our, 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 our soul is our mind, will our emotions, and our physical body is your physical body. So when we die, our bodies go back to the ground. When, when you die in Europe and you believe in Jesus Christ, you go home to be with the Lord. What goes home to be with the Lord? Your spirit and your soul. They go to be with the Lord because those things are invisible. Okay? Well, Pastor Larry, well, why do we need a resurrection? Because you are not just spirit and soul. You are spirit, soul, and body. So when Jesus comes, Jesus will resurrect our bodies and we will take on new bodies. The spirit and the soul will reunite again, right? When, when, you, when your loved ones right now, it, they're in heaven with Jesus. They're in heaven with Jesus. What is? Their spirit, their soul. But when Jesus comes back, those graves will be opened and their bodies will resurrect. And those spirits will come back into the body, and they will be reunited. A body that will never die, grow old, or grow weary again. Amen, somebody. Amen. So that's why when you see somebody in a casket, you say, oh, we're going to put my grandma to rest. Your grandma's not resting. She's more alive than she's ever been. That's why I love what Jamie kept saying that at his grandma's funeral. She's not dead. She's more alive than she's ever been. When I, m I'm going to miss my grandma. I'm, I mean, I know I want to outlive her. She would want me to outlive her, right? I'm going to outlive her and my grandpa. When we put her in the ground, of course I'm going to cry and I'm going to weep, but I know she's not there. She's home. She's at home rejoicing with Jesus. She's with the Lord already. You're just going to miss the body, that presence, okay? I could say more about that, but we'll leave that for offline, okay? Okay. Now, let me say this to you guys. Uh, so I'm saying all that to say is that, l l let me say this. Nobody is resting in peace right now. When you say things like, when you say, Larry, you know, Larry died, may he rest in peace. That is not biblical. Because nobody rests in peace. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The spirit does not die. The spirit lives. Okay. I'm going to also say something else. Not everybody's going to die. All right? I saw somebody put on Facebook one day that said, we're all going to die. That is not what the Bible says. The Bible says that there was some, that some people will still be alive when Jesus comes. So we're not all going to the grave. <laughs> the Bible says the dead in Christ will rise. Listen, this is what it says. It says when Jesus comes, the dead in Christ will rise first. Watch this. And they which remain. Those that are alive 
will be caught up together with them in the air. So what does that mean, Patrick? That means if you're alive when Jesus comes, Patrick, you could be eating McDonald's or Whataburger, and boom, instantly your body's going to be changed from what? From mortality to immortality. And you're going to begin to be raised and go home with him. Amen. <sighs> and I believe we're going to eat because y- y'all know that Jesus, Jesus ate in his resurrected body. The, but it won't have no blood. Do y'all know that the resurrected body doesn't have any blood? <laughs> it's a spiritual body. It doesn't have, that's why Jesus said, Jesus said, uh, uh, this doesn't have blood and all that in his body. Jesus didn't no longer have the blood in his body anymore because it was all spirit. It was all perfected. That's another topic. But all right. So, so our spirits are new. When the moment we get saved, our spirits are new. So to be born again means what? That you are a new creation and that your spirit is new. That is who you are, guys. But Pastor Larry, why do I get mad? Because your soul is not perfect. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, or your emotions. Now let me ask you a question. God's spirit is connected to my spirit, right? Okay. You know what? Let's just stop right there with that, and we'll come back to that, okay? Put that on the side shelf. We'll come back. Today I want to talk for a few minutes. Okay, so what is it? So we know that we're new. We know that we're created new in our spirit. But what does that mean for us? Like, what does that encompass? Okay, I'm, I know I, I know I'm new, Pastor Larry, but is that all? Like, is that all that we have? No, that's not all what that we have, okay? I'm going to tell you what else we are. We are made righteous. Now, now I know you probably say, Pastor Larry, we've talked about this. Not the way I'm going to talk about it today. Okay, I want you all to go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Oh, I'm going to say so much for there where I'm just like a people that are watching online. I'm just like a fountain ready to explode, but it's too much to say. Okay, we can study this for weeks. Okay, Brother Ever was even asking me, well, why do people struggle with this and struggle with this? And and he was asking all kind of good questions that we could cover. Amen. If you say I'm new, then why do I do this? If you say I'm new, why do I act like that? I'm going to try to cover that, okay, as much as I can tonight. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Justin said, let's hear it. I'm trying, Justin. I'm trying, bro. <laughs> you got to tell that clock to slow down. Look what it says. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin... To be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So we are made righteous. The moment you got saved, you are made righteous. I'm going to say that again. Guys, I think y'all hear me. I think y'all hear that, but you don't believe that. Because there's, how many of y'all know a lot of people saying you need to get right with God? You need to get right with God. How have you got right with God? How many of y'all know that we'll always go to church trying to get right with God, right? But you're not, we're, no, we're always right with God because we're righteous. Our spirits are right with God. We are right with God because our spirits have been made new and we're righteous. The word righteousness means to be made right with God. Now, so the moment you accepted Christ, Christ looks at you as righteous. Now, Alicia, come here, Alicia. Stand right here in front of me. Look at me. Alicia's, now she's a little girl. She ain't, she ain't done too many bad things, but we're going to use her, okay? The moment, the moment Alicia says yes to Jesus, what happens to her, guys? Her spirit is made new. She becomes a new creation in Christ, right? All that that we're saying. But she is now righteous. Now, what does that mean? That means that she has right. She has, she is right with God. 
watch this. But is her behavior always right? No. So where does the righteousness reside? In her spirit. There you go, Brother Edward. Because her spirit's been made new. Her, her actions may not be right. Her soul may not always be right, right? Her mind, her will, her emotion, right? We get angry. We say things we shouldn't say because we're mad, right? But what is righteous? Our spirit. Our spirit man is righteous. Now, I'm going to throw another curveball at you. The word righteousness, Grandma, also gives the, the definition of being treated as if you have never sinned. So when Elisha becomes righteous in God's eyes, God sees Elisha as if she has never sinned. Thank you, Alicia. You can sit down. Y'all give her a hand clap. Amen. <laughs> now, my grandma may remember that she sins and use the bell. <laughs> but God looks at you as if you never sinned. You know why this is important, Diane, to understand? Because a lot of us live with regret in our past. And your kids may bring it up. Your family may bring it up. But in God's eyes, Diane, God treats you as if you have never done wrong. Why? Because you're new. You're a new creation in Christ. That's why, guys, you cannot live. That's why you have to understand that when you accept Christ, you're totally forgiven. When we take communion on Sundays, it's a declaration that I am righteous. And that means it's, it's a God looks at me and says, Larry is perfect. He has never sinned. But Pastor Larry, I do sin. Yes, you do sin. But it's not. Let, well, let me stop. I'm getting ahead. But Pastor Larry, how do I receive this righteousness? It's a gift. Right? Jamie, real quick. Romans 5, 17. Was this all right tonight? Because I, I need y'all to get this tonight. I, I know, Jamie, I was telling Pastor Jamie this morning, brother, but Jamie said, what are you going to preach about tonight? And I told him, I'm going to talk about this. And I said, I know we've already talked about it. I said, but I really need y'all to get this tonight. Like, I really need y'all to know what it means to be righteous. Because some we, we say that, you know, the only thing we know in this church, a lot of us, is we're saved by grace. But that's not enough, guys. The gospel is more than that. The gospel is deeper than that. It's that we've been declared righteous. Now watch this. Romans 5.17. Thank you, Audra. I appreciate that. Glad you're on. Love you, sister. Rome, I'm seeing y'all's comments on my phone, guys, as you're commenting. It says, Romans 5.17. For if by one man's offense, death reigned through the one. That's Adam, right? Because of what Adam did, death reigned and sin reigned. Much more those who receive the abundance of grace, and say it with me, the next part, and the gift, say it again, and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So righteousness, what, is a gift. You are righteous, Crystal, because you received it as a gift. It's not because you acted right. It's because you believed it. And you received it. Pastor Larry, how can you say that God looks at you as if you never sinned? Because I believe that. And I receive it. It's a gift. It's not something we earn. That's why, guys, and, and I, I'm being nice when I say this, but this is true. That's why you cannot be listening to messages and preachings that tell you you need to get right with God. We need to get right with God. Church, if you're not right with God already in your spirit, then something's wrong. Especially when they try to tie it to your salvation, right? Now, if they're saying you need to clean your act up, you need to start acting better, that's different. But if they start presenting it in a way, Crystal, as if you're not saved, then that's, you need to cut it off. Because, because being right with God is not earned. It's a gift. Because it, let me tell you. Pastor, Larry, how can we how can we say it's a gift? Because Jesus gave it to us. He became sin that we might become the righteousness of God. Is that not what we read? So Jesus took our sin. We always preach this, right? Jesus took our sin so that you and I could become righteous. Okay, one, one, another scripture. Watch this. Now this is going to even be more powerful. 
Thank you. I'm crying, brother. I'm getting excited up here. Can I say something to you guys? You know, Grandma, this is something that's dear to my heart. If there's anything that, there's three things that I love to preach about, Brother Edward. If somebody were to interview me and say, what are three things that you love to preach about? Grace, our identity, and the book of Revelation. Because for many years, Diane, I was a Christian and didn't know these truths. I was always trying to do the right thing. I was going to church. I was fasting. I was praying. I was reading my Bible, trying to earn something from God, trying my hardest to get right with God. But nobody ever told me, Diane, that I was already right. So I was always on this treadmill, Diane, performing and trying and striving and it's like, if I would mess up Diana, it felt like, well, I just got to start all over again. And there I go again on the treadmill again, trying to earn it. And then I would always question myself and say, well, if I die, am I really going to go to heaven? Because I don't do everything I should do. And see, I was always on this treadmill, guys. But the moment you understand this truth of who you are in Christ, it takes you off the treadmill and you can rejoice. Because you know it's not something you need to earn. It's something you simply need to receive. And not only receive, guys, but here's, this, here's the one we struggle with. We need to believe that. Now, Isaiah 54, verse 14. Alicia, I'm going to use you again, okay? Hold on. Stand right here. Face everybody. Who wants to be in the front? Alicia's our helper today. Isaiah 54, verse 14. In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear. And from terror, for it shall not come near you. And everybody says, Amen. Now watch this. How can you stay away from fear? And how can you stay away from oppression? Is when you're established in righteousness. Now the word righteousness, Brother Edward, doesn't just mean Go get Grandpa's jacket real quick. Grandpa, can you, will you use your jacket real quick? Okay. Well, she's going to... <laughs> okay. Just hold it. Don't put it on yet. Okay? Just hold it on like that for a minute. Face everybody. Now, now this is what got me. Notice the phrase. It says, in righteousness you shall be established. Now, now, Pastor Jamie, the word in there gives the idea of a fixed position. Oh, this is going to bless y'all. What does that mean? That means this. Put the jacket on, Alicia. We not only wear, now there's other scriptures that say we wear righteousness. We do wear righteousness. We're clothed in the garment of righteousness. Are y'all with me? Now take the jacket off. Put it, o lay it on the ground. Take your shoes off. Because I want to get Grandpa's jacket dirty. Now just stand on the jacket. No, we not only wear righteousness, but we're in a position of righteousness. Let me say it this way. When you go to jail, you are in a prison. That is your position. That is your location. Are y'all with me? When the Bible says, in righteousness you establish, what he's saying is that you are in a prison of righteousness. That is where you are located. It, like, okay, when I went on my trip, if you were to ask me, where are you? I am in Arizona. What does that mean? My position, my location is in Arizona. Right, Patrick? So in Jesus, in, 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 the, in the Bible, where are you? I am in righteousness. I stand on righteous ground. I am in, in, a, I am in a prison of righteousness, guys. So you're not only becoming righteous, you live 
in righteous ground. Does that, uh, brother, there was the only one excited. You can take the back of your back. I'm excited. Because you know what we think? I'm righteous today, and I'm not righteous tomorrow. I messed up today, so that means I'm not righteous today. No, you are fixed in that position. You didn't earn it. You didn't merit it. That's where you're at. That's why, guys, even when you mess up, you've got to say, I'm still the righteousness of God. 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 Why? Because my position is righteous. My grandma's probably going to buy me a hamburger before she would buy Jonathan a hamburger. Why? Because I am fixed in a relationship as her grandson. You don't mean she don't love Jonathan, but I'm family. There's a bond there. Right? That's the way God is, you guys. He's not going to leave you because there's a bond there, Diane. There's a connection. Diane, think about this, Diane. If God leaves you, he has to leave himself because you and him are one. The Bible says to be that, that you and I are one spirit with Jesus Christ. We are united with him. And the Bible says we are, now it makes sense when the Bible says he's the head, I am the body. Christ is the head, we are the body. What? The head can't do anything without the body. And the body can't do anything without the head. It's this what? It's this connection that we have. Where? In righteousness. Next part. We're made holy. We're made holy, right? Hebrews chapter 10. So we're righteous. When, when we accept Jesus, we're born again. We're new creation. Thanks, thank you, everybody, for liking the message online. Please keep liking it. Let me know you're enjoying it. I see the comments. Thank you. Hebrews 10, verse 10. Watch this. That's why Bible study is so important, you guys, because you've got to learn these truths. Jesus did a lot for us. Jesus has done a lot to fix all this for us. Hebrews 10, <coughs> verse 10. By that will, we have been sanctified. Say holy. So we have been made holy through the offering of the body of of Jesus Christ. What is that referring to? The cross. Would you say that? Where did Christ offer himself? At the cross. So we are sanctified, Diane. We're made holy because of Jesus' death on the cross. So you're holy, Michael. You are holy. You're not trying to be holy, Michael. You are holy. But where is the holiness at? In your... There we go. Okay, everybody say it with me. The holiness is in your spirit. Why? Because you are a spirit being. God is spirit. If God is, if God is a spirit and he is holy, then he is a holy spirit. <laughs> when, you say, when you say holy spirit come, what are you saying? A spirit that is different from every other spirit. Because the word holy means to be set apart. Annie has a china cabinet, right? And you put your china dishes in there. Now, I doubt it. I, 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 I'm pretty sure that if I went over there and grabbed a plate from Annie's china cabinet and put my McDonald's uh, french fries on it, my hand might be slapped <laughs> saying, don't touch that because it's not for that, Right? It's for what? It's, 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 it's for something important. It's set apart. Right? Now, let me give you, a, let me give you a, another example. And I didn't want to use this example because I don't want you to think I'm always mentioning this topic. But none of us would come in here and we would get drunk in here. Right? We wouldn't put a, 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 a DJ booth up here and they just start drinking and partying in here. Why? Because it's a holy place. Right? We won't do things that we would do out there. 
Let's just be honest. There's certain things you're just not going to do in this building that you wouldn't do. I said, why? Because it's a church. But the, the so, but why won't you do it in here, Diane? Because it's a holy place. And uh, and what that means is that it means that it's not it's not for common use. In other words, this building is not just used for anything. It's a holy place. You know where I'm going, Mary? And what I'm saying to you is that when you're holy, you don't do what everybody else does. Because you're a holy person. You're set apart. You're different. You don't act like everybody else acts, Pastor Jamie. Why? Because you're holy. How are you holy? Because God made you holy. And holiness is something that Christ gives us. We're no church. That's why the Bible says, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Come out from who? The worldly people. Now, I know. Now, listen to me, church. I know that when, when we say, you know, when people say things like you can't live like the world, you know, don't be out there partying and doing what the world does. And, and, and sometimes, Diane, it comes off like real bashful, you know, like they're bashing you, you know, like we, we got to. You know, we got to live as, as hermits. But that's not the thing. The, 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 it's, it's not explained well, Diane. And, and what people need to understand is that w- when people say that you need to live different, they're saying because you've been made different. And when you've been made different, you don't want to live that way. Are you going to say, guys, I'm not interested in going to the beer joint. Because I'm a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And if we're new creations in Christ, then we say to ourselves, I'm holy. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not for common use. This this body, that's that's why, that's why you, you have to you have to look at yourself and say, I just can't do what everybody else does. I can't talk the way everybody else talks. I can't I, I can't dress the way everybody else dresses. You know? I saw, you know, let me say something. I'm going to say this. There's a free, how many of y'all know Hillsong Church? They're a band. They sing a lot of songs like, uh, how many of y'all know that song? What a beautiful name it is. Okay, Hillsong wrote that song. Well, they just got rid of one of their pastors this week, I believe. Right, Pastor Jamie? Because he was taking pictures with his shirt off, and he was wearing tight, tight pants. And you could see his private area through the pants. First thing, now let's just talk about this for number one. Number one, if you're holy, you are not going to be posting pictures like that. Number two, you're not going to be wearing tight pants where everybody can see your bulge hanging. Why? Because you're holy and you're sanctified. Pastor Jamie said something to me that was true. He says, if you're going to send anybody a picture like that, you just send it to your wife, to your spouse. Why are you going to put it on Facebook? What does that tell me? That tells me that he doesn't understand that he's different. And he doesn't need to do what everybody else does. Church, you know, a lot of the, that's why that's why you got to be careful of celebrity preachers. Because they get too high and mighty and they start they, they start you they want to reach the world. They want to reach Justin Bieber. They want to reach all of these secular artists. And there's nothing wrong with that. Jesus was holy, yet he fellowshiped with sinners. I'm going to say that because I don't want nobody to think I'm saying we can't be around sinners. Jesus was holy, yet he hung around with sinners. But what I'm saying, Crystal, is that you got to be careful that there's something that doesn't get in your spirit that pulls you back instead of helping you go forward. And what I see with a lot of these preachers, Brother Albert, is I see that they start hanging around these celebrities, trying to reach the rappers, and it's a it's a it's a matter of time before they start messing up, and you start seeing them fall, make mistakes, having infidelity in their marriage. Why? Because they start allowing the influence of the world to influence them. And we're called to be holy, church. Holiness is an attitude. It's an attitude of the heart. 
I was going to put something on my Facebook today. Jesus said, love not the world. But Jesus did not say, don't love the people of the world. See, we, don't, we, don't, we can't love the world thinking in the way they do things, but we can love people. Right? You don't always love what your kids do, but you love your kids. <laughs> right? And what I'm saying is that we love people. I love my sisters, I love my family, and I love my friends. But that don't mean I love everything that they do. And so when you realize that you've been set apart and you're made holy, you're different. Now, Pastor Larry, why is this important? I'm going to show you why it's important. Jamie, ready? Oh, let's hurry. Uh, Acts 3.14. Pastor Larry, you sound like one of them old preachers. <laughs> them hellfire preachers. I'm not, it, it, oh, sometimes we need to keep the old fashioned. We can't always throw the, we, we can't always throw the baby out with the bath water. Some things are good for us to keep on, right? Acts chapter 3, verse 14. And this is speaking of Jesus. Now watch this. 3.14. But you denied the Holy One. So aren't we made holy? So what he's saying is what? You denied Jesus. He was the Holy One. And he was the just one. You know what that word just means? It means righteous. <laughs> so Jesus is both holy and righteous. Stop. We have his DNA, right? We have his sperma. We have his seed in us. We have his characteristic. We have his genetic. Remember that from last week? And if so what does it say here? It says that Jesus is the holy one and Jesus is the righteous one. And we just read scriptures that says what? We are righteous and we are holy. So whatever Jesus is, Grandma, that's what we are. I'm saying to y'all today is that you cannot be something outside of Christ. Jesus is holy. You're holy. Jesus is righteous, you're righteous. Is Jesus loving? Yes. Then you know what that means we got to be with people? Yes. Loving. You ready for the hard one? Here it is, because it's hard for me too, Brother Edward. Is Jesus forgiving? Oh, yes. Then we got to be forgiving. This is a hard one for me. Is Jesus patient? Help me, Lord. Yes. yes. That means Pastor Larry's got to be patient. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and I'm not, Diane, that's why I got two days shipping from Amazon, because I don't want to wait. <laughs> so, so we, so we got to be, uh, w when we're born again, and, and from his seed, we also take on holiness and righteousness. Amen, somebody. You're made one with Christ. The holiness he has, he gives to you. The righteousness he has, he gives to you. Amen, somebody. Now, let me show it to you even more. First Corinthians, Jamie, first Corinthians, chapter one, verse three. We're going to hurry up real quick. And then I'm going to say a few more things and we'll be done. Oh, I got Just give me a few more minutes. Let me say this real quick. First Corinthians, chapter one, verse 30. Pastor Jamie, I'm sorry. Did I say three? Or I said 30. I don't remember. Just 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 to clarify what I said, look what it says. But of him. You are in Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God. Who became wisdom from, who became wisdom for us? Jesus. And he also became our what? Righteousness and sanctification and our redemption. He is our holiness. He is my righteousness. See, if I receive his spirit, then I receive his righteousness. If if I receive his salvation, I receive his holiness. Where is it at? In my spirit. We take on his DNA. Would you say that? A lot of things have been given to us, guys. You know what else has been given? The Holy Spirit's been given to us. You know what else has been given to us? Power has been given to us. Authority, Brother Edward. Has been, there's, there's a lot of things that we could preach about with this series. 
But my point is this, is that I want you to see that everything's been given to you in your spirit. Why, Pastor, why do you get, but why just our spirit? Because God is a spirit. But Pastor Larry, if I have all these bag of goodies, <laughs> when somebody has a, a Halloween basket, they got a lot of candy, me and Jamie always say, let me see what kind of goodies you got in your basket. But Pastor Larry, why do I struggle? Pastor Larry, why do I still lose my temper when I get on the freeway, Pastor Larry? Pastor Larry, if you say I got patience, why don't I always feel patient? Anybody ever wake up in a bad mood? I do. I can wake up and be mad. Ain't nobody made me mad yet, Diane, sometimes. A little frustrated. Maybe I didn't get enough sleep. Why? I'm going to tell you why. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, Romans 12, 2, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is good and acceptable will of God. See, you know what it is, Diane, is that our mind is messed up. Like I said last week. You have, listen to me, I'm going to say this, I wrote this down. We live different when we start to think different. Now come here, uh, Alicia. You're in trouble. Stand right here in front of me, Alicia. Right here. Face the fire pot. Now. Alicia has the Holy Spirit in her. Alicia has everything in her, right? She has power. She has authority. She has everything in her. But this flower pot right here that's on this table, it represents something that she thinks she needs that she doesn't have. And she's very tempted to grab it. And, she's, and, she's, and she don't know what to do. Right? Now, now follow me, guys. This is what I'm telling you. In order for Alicia not to touch this flower pot, she has to become more aware of what's in her by changing the way she thinks. Because the moment Alicia changes the way she thinks and realizes what she has in her spirit, the flower pot loses its temptation to her. And a lot of the reasons why we think, we, we, we say, Pastor, why do I struggle to forgive? Is because you don't think you have forgiveness in you already. Pastor, why do I struggle to love people? Because you think, you, because you look too much at the unlovingness. But when you start looking at what you have inside of you, in your spirit, and you change your soul. You change the way you think. You know what happens? Albert, you start, your body starts to li live different. Right? Instead of you wanting to cuss the man at the store, you want to just say, God bless him. I think you at least you can sit down. Are you with me? Let me say something to you guys. Let me I'll give you an example. You know, there was a time in my life, and I'll be honest with you, that I wasn't living right, doing everything right. And I remember, and I struggled for a long time, because I wondered how I could be drinking a beer. I had a beer in my hand. Well, not a beer, because I've never been a beer drinker. But I was drinking a mixture. And this time I was already buzzed. I was already feeling good. And I remember the Holy Spirit spoke to me, Diane. And the Holy Spirit said, you're better than that. And I struggled, Diane, because I was taught, well, when you do sinful things, God doesn't speak to you. God leaves you. That's what I was taught, Diane. But then I realized, now that I know these truths that I'm teaching y'all, is that God never left me. God was there in my spirit talking to my soul and telling my soul, 
You don't need those things to make you happy. You need to draw from me. You need me to be your source. And when we get that in our spirit, Albert, it changes the way. That's why you can say, I don't need a beer to be happy because God's my happiness. I've said that I've, I've said this when we first started the church, but you don't need a beer to relax because God will make you relax. Hallelujah. He will be your peace. He will be your rest. You don't need that cigarette. You don't need whatever you think you need to make you happy. Why? Because God will be the source. Yeah. Well, Pastor, you just don't know what I go through. See, that's your problem. You're looking at everything you're going through. Go back, Jamie, please, to the picture, if you would. I need to stop already. I need to, I'm done. You're looking at everything that you see through your physical body. Yeah. You see your body is connected to the natural physical world. Y'all see that? So whatever your eye takes in, your natural eye takes in, it's going to affect your soul. But if you change your soul from focusing on the natural body to focus on what's in your spirit and draw from your spirit, you're going to realize how you start living different. Watch this. I don't live different because I have to. I live different because I want to. And you know, and you know why I want to, Michael? Because my focus is on the spirit. I know that everything I need is in him. Everything I desire is in him. Everything I lack is in him. And whatever I need is in him. Why? Because I change my soul. And when you start thinking the way I'm telling you to think, when you, when you get that bad doctor's report, you know what you're going to say? In the natural, I'm sick. But my spirit says, I'm well. My checkbook says, I'm broke, but my spirit says all blessings belong to me, and I have more than enough. That's why, church, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Everything you need, Diane, is in your spirit. You just got to learn to say, Lord, help me to change the way I think. Help me to believe what Pastor Larry's saying is inside of my spirit. And I'm telling you guys, watch what God will do in your life. Are y'all blessed tonight? Yeah, yeah. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Let's stand. I'm going to let you go. Amen. I'm over time. Yes. Are y'all blessed? Yeah. Let's pray. Anybody have a prayer request tonight before we head out? Going once. Going twice. Your grandson. Yes. Let's continue to pray for her grandson. Need to share. Let's con- yes, let's continue to pray for it, for people to come back to church. Amen. We need more people to start coming to church. Let's pray. All right. Let's pray. And I'm going to let you go. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all those that are here today, Lord, and all those that are watching online. Thank you for this time of Bible study. I pray, Father, that I said something today that will bless your people and help your people tonight. Lord, we just lift up Diane's grandson to you, Father. I'm believing you to continue to do a miracle in his life, God. I'm believing you, God, to just transform him, Lord. I believe in you, God, that your healing power is flowing through his body even now, Lord. Lord, we stand on your word. We stand on your word that it says that by your stripes he is healed, Lord. And, Lord, we declare that over him. We don't care what the doctor's report says. We don't care what man says. We only care what you say, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you're going to touch him, Lord. We thank you right now, God, that healing virtue is flowing through his physical body, Lord. Shower him with your love and your peace. Lord, overtake him, Lord, and let him know that you are with him, Lord. And we give you the praise and the glory. And, Father, bless this time, Lord. Bless your people. Bless all those that watched and all those that are here tonight. Lord, bless the remainder of our week. And we ask for you, Lord, just to help us to prepare our minds for Sunday service, Lord, that we can come in focus, Lord, just knowing that you're here with us, Lord, ready to worship, ready to seek you, Lord. And I pray, God, that as people go through the week as well, that they will remember this message that was brought to them today. And we thank you for it, and we give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said amen. Church, I love you. Amen. You're dismissed. Thank you, everybody, for watching online.